Hello, all my Juki friends. My name is Alba, and I would like to welcome you to another Tips and Tricks with Juki. Today, I am talking about the double fold bias binder. And I have two sets in front of me. One is a 38 millimeter and one is a 32 millimeter. And the one I have on my machine is the wider of the two. And I want to show you what exactly is in the package when you open this up. So I am going to open it right in front of you. And I am going to pull out the binder itself. And it comes exactly like this with fabric and binding on it. It comes with a little package with a thumb screw and a foot, and it comes with an instruction sheet. So what I wanted to show you is a little bit of detail of what is in this. And as I said, the one that's on the machine is the 38 millimeter one. I'm gonna set those boxes aside. And what that means is how wide the fabric is that is put into the binder and how wide the finished product will come out. The 38 millimeter one, I used a one and a half inch strip of fabric. It folded it and the completed bias is about three eighths of an inch. Now, what I like about this, and I'm going to open up the foot, the 32 millimeter one I have not used. This is a brand new one. I will show you the foot that comes with this, and you're going to notice how short that foot is. And this is really helpful as you're sewing because that binder can get really close to the foot and allows for very little movement. And of course, we have our thumb screws to be able to put this onto the machine. Now, what most people uh, get confused with is they're expecting this portion here to lay flat on the machine. And as you can see, this rests off of the machine. Let me move those spools away rest slightly off of the machine and I'm going to go with my stylus so you see that there is a gap and this actually pivots and moves and this is really wonderful but the thumb screw goes into the screw hole that's on the bed of the machine so these are intended for the industrial machines and the machines with the solid metal bed so that they could get screwed directly into the machine. And a lot of people do not realize that pivot action that this attachment has. Now, I have two pieces of fabric, and both of them have been cut to one and a half inches. And I'm going to show you the struggle that most people have. And my tip for feeding the fabric into the machine and getting this to run smoothly. And I'm just moving my foot pedal so that I can get to it. Now, most people try to feed the fabric with it in the position right in front of the foot. But if you pivot this, it allows you to better see getting that fabric in there and just puts you at a much better angle. Now, as you're noticing, I have the wrong side of the fabric facing me. Now, where most people have an issue is right there. And I'm going to get an even smaller stylus. That tip of that fabric needs to go underneath this section. And this is where a lot of people have trouble trying to do that. And I am going to give you my tip for getting that done. Now, let me pull my trusty scissor out and I am going to cut a point into my fabric. 
by putting a point into that fabric, and you definitely want to use a stiletto, look at how easily, and I'm going to turn that just a little bit so that I could see how easily now that goes right into that fold. And as I pull this out, I want to make sure that my fabric is folded. And what I do is I give this a little bit of a finger press. Now, when I lift my foot and lift my needle, I can move that fabric right underneath the foot. And that large thumb screw, I'm going to open that up so you could see what I'm pointing at, will allow you to move this right and left so that when you lower your foot, your needle is just slightly off of that edge to top stitch that edge. Now, I cut this, it was the width of fabric, and I am going to just sew away. Now watch, even at that full speed, how brilliantly and effortlessly, and because this attachment is right up to the foot, watch, no hands. And I am able to go all the way to the end of that fabric. Now, I am showing you sewing these pieces shut. I'm going to do a video really soon on putting um, this into a quilt sandwich and doing that mitered corner. But I wanted to show you this finished product and also some of the crafty things that you can do with these strips. You might have noticed my lanyard and I really like fun, bright colors. So I made my lanyard with the strip and I happen to have made it so that it can hold my little scissors. But also weaving fabric going just weaving fabric and doing that repeatedly so that you can create your own fabric and your own patterns. And I've just done that very quickly. How cute would that be as an inset for a waistline or for a garment, for a tote bag? I want you to Google and search YouTube videos for, um, fabric weaving to see all of the different things that you could do with that. I want you to stay tuned for another video that I will be doing on mitering corners and using this on quilt fabric. So I want to thank you for coming and sharing your time with me. Until next time, bye-bye.